10 and Exodus chapter 13 verse 17 and verse 18 this morning in your Bibles that would be a great blessing indeed book of Exodus and really I am excited amen what God is doing amen in these last days and I really believe the best really is yet to come amen hallelujah Exodus 3 1 to 10 13 17 and 18 I've done a fair bit of flying of late. Uh, and I'm not mean in the sense of me being a pilot, but being me a passenger. And one of the things when you get on a plane, you travel from one place to another. One of the things this morning that can become very frustrating is when you hear the pilot over the comm say these words uh, that uh, uh, the flight is now we have to put the flight or they tell you from that time sometimes they don't say it but thank god they usually do tell us which i think is important that our flight has to be put into a what is known as a holding uh, a pattern and once that announcement is made what comes to mind of passengers if you know what a holding pattern is and i'm going to tell you what it is eventually is how long are we going to be in this place why are we in this holding pattern what's the problem now when is it going to end? And recently we just came back uh, and, 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 and I remember again when we went to South Africa as well. Uh, uh, this year we were in a holding pattern for about 10 minutes. It, it felt like 10 years. You know, you were meant to land at a specific time, but because of the holding pattern, you had to wait uh, before certain things were taking place and you could finally land. And I'll tell you right now, as a pastor, I've counseled people, but I also have counseled pastors who seem like their life is in a holding pattern. They're asking God, what is God doing? When will it be done? Why did this happen? And this question frequently comes at these times, but the answers to those questions, amen, are not easily uh, 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 realized uh, as quickly as the questions. But what I want this morning, or should I say what God wants to do, God wants to help us, every single one of us, with holding patterns today. And that means this morning, there are men and women in this church, right now you are in a holding pattern. But I want to prophesy there are others, you are not in a holding pattern, but I prophesy you soon will be eventually. And when that time happens, you need to begin to bring to remember, amen, God's word to help you in that season and that particular time in your life where it seems like nothing is changing and you seem to be in the same place and nothing seems to be moving forward and nothing seems to be happening. There's a, so much more happening than you realize this morning. Our preacher, someone I simply called, amen, um, uh, God's uh, holding pattern. We want to look at the people this morning who are in a holding pattern and through their lives, God's going to speak to us about his holding pattern. So let's look Exodus 3, 1 to 10. And we're going to jump to this uh, chapter 13, should I say. The Bible says, now Moses was tending the flock of Jephro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, do not draw near this place. Sorry, do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. So I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up from the land to a good and a large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to a place of the Canaanites and the Hivites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me, and I have also seen the oppression which, which the Egyptian oppressed them. Verse 10, come now, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of uh, Egypt. Now, let's turn um, chapter 13. Verse 17 and 16. The Bible says, Then it came to pass, when Pharaoh had let the people go, 
that God did not lead them by the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, lest perhaps the people change their mind when they see war and return to Egypt. Verse 18, so God led the people around by the way of the wilderness of the sea of the Red Sea, and the children of Israel went up in orderly ranks out of the land of Egypt. Father, this morning, we love you. Again, we thank you for this opportunity, uh, Lord, to gather around your word this morning. God, there are men and women here, Lord, who are in a holding pattern. And God, there are others, Lord, the rest of us are going to eventually enter one. I'm asking this morning, God, you would send your word, God, as light in the darkness, God, they are facing and we are going to face. Father, I'm praying, God, right now, you would save, God, precious souls, God, who are lost in their sin. Break them from the holding pattern of sin and death and bring them to life. Spirit of God, I'm praying this morning, you would speak to the people of God. Oh, God. God, uh, challenge us, God. Continue to develop us to be the men and women, God, the church you've called us to be. Father, we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, and all God's people said, uh, and all God's people said, uh, amen and amen. I want to look first of all this morning at calling. I want to consider this morning calling. If you read the Bible this morning, especially in the book of Deuteronomy and uh, sorry, especially the morning, the book of Genesis and Exodus, you find out in many people called the children. We know them as the children of Israel. At the end of Genesis, uh, they have left uh, uh, Egypt uh, and they have come into, uh, sorry, they have left Canaan uh, and they've come into Egypt because of a famine that was in the land. Uh, they come into this uh, Egypt uh, because Joseph uh, had been sent ahead of them by God. And you know the story. I'm not going to bore you with it. Or should I say amen? Explain it. Read your Bible. It's right there. Uh, they've come in. You can say amen at, uh, at not just the expense, amen, but as guests of Joseph. Uh, amen. He's there, uh, man. He's one of their brethren. He brings them uh, into a place called Goshima, uh, a land that is flourishing, a land that is uh, uh, that, that 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 has all the needs, uh, amen. That they need, you can say, to survive uh, and to thrive. Uh, and because of this, everyone is being blessed. Uh, because of Joseph, uh, time begins to pass. And in Exodus chapter one, uh, I mean, we are told a new king arises, uh, uh, which uh, 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 does not know about the exploits of Joseph. Does not know, uh, and uh, because of Joseph, the world was saved does not know that because of joseph he's even alive that a new king has arisen he has no idea about joseph he doesn't care about the people of god he doesn't care about children of israel in fact the bible tells us he's intimidated by the children of israel and because he's intimidated by them he begins to oppress them he begins amen to come against them he begins to assault amen the children of god can i stop and say to you this morning church somebody once said this word that that which does not kill us makes us strong Stronger. And here, amen, this morning, amen, they have been oppressed, amen, they've been attacked, amen, they've been bombarded, but all that was happening, they were just getting stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger this morning. The Bible tells us this Pharaoh, man, he begins to oppress them even more, amen, he, he's frustrated at the fact that, that his plans are not coming to pass to destroy the people of God. And what he does, he does two things. First of all, he tries to use, the, the Bible tells us, uh, 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 um, he tries to use uh, the midwives uh, and tells them that any time uh, a Hebrew boy is being born, then the moment he's born, he's to be killed. Uh, but the Bible says these midwives, they feared God and they would not obey Pharaoh. Then he decides no longer he's not going to be subtle. It's going to be very blatant. Uh, he commands the people uh, and any time a boy is born from the Hebrew people, uh, they have to be taking those boys and to be thrown into the River Nile. The River Nile was a place, amen, uh, a river that was uh, filled with alligators. Uh, it was a dangerous place. Uh, and here they are, and uh, many times soldiers will come in and they'll grab this Hebrew boys the moment they're born, they'll throw them to the river now uh, to even drown or to be consumed uh, by the alligators. Uh, and what I want you to do this morning, church, it's at this time uh, that Moses, who God would use uh, to deliver his people, is born. Now, I want to stop and make a statement this morning. The Bible this morning is about God and the people. It's about God, first and foremost. But it's also about the people, and they're known as the children of Israel. And what we need to see is God makes a promise to their forefathers. We see them in our text, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He makes them a promise that I'm going to 
bring you to a land. I'm going to give you your own nation. I'm going to give you your own land. There's going to be a land that is flowing with milk and honey. It's going to be a place where you're going to be blessed. It's going to be a place where you're going to call home this morning. And he makes him this promise. And I believe this morning it is in the word of God because God wants us to know that when I make a promise, I keep my word this morning. That when God says I say something, make no mistake this morning, I, I, I say what I mean and I mean what I say this morning. And I want to pause and say this morning, our world would be such a better place this morning if people simply kept their words. Our world would be a better place if politicians simply kept the words of their manifestos and not as soon as they come into government, they begin to have amen, uh, amnesia, thinking, did I really say that? Our world would be such a better place if parents simply kept their words and looked after their children and be the garden of their children and raise up their children this morning. Our world would be such a better word. Its spouses kept their vows that they made to each other, amen, before God and before family and before friends. And let me stop and say this. Our world would be such a better world if you and I simply kept our word as well. There's no so point pointing out our hands at other people tonight, amen. We are just as guilty of not keeping our words. See, Moses' story really is an amazing story. Because Moses' story is about a man who was raised royal. But one day he makes a major miscalculation. He finds out that he's not an Egyptian. That he's actually a Hebrew. At the age of 40, he decides, I'm going to go and see the plight of my people. And when he goes to see his people, the Bible tells us he sees a, an Egyptian, amen, uh, uh, being violent towards an Israelite. Amen, he's abusing an Israelite. And the Bible says Moses looked to his right, looked to his left. He thought nobody saw, and he attacked the Egyptian, and he murdered, he killed the Egyptian. And finally, he decides, you know what, I'm going to go back, and, 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 and I'm going to go, and I'm going to begin to come to the people of God. I'm going to let them know what I've done this morning. But when he does that, things do not work out the way he planned. And what I mean this morning, his miscalculation was not that he committed murder, that sin this morning. His miscalculation was that he supposed that if I do this, if I kill this man, the people of God are going to carry me in, and then they're going to hoist me their shoulder, and they're going to begin to celebrate me. Our Savior's arrived, for he's a jolly good fellow, and then he supposed everything's going to work out this morning. But the problem this morning, church, things did not work out the way he supposed this morning. Can I tell you this morning, church, be careful of when you and I start supposing. Because Moses supposed wrong. You know the story, he runs for his life and he ends up in the backside of the desert and he's there for 40 years. And one day he goes into the wilderness and he ends up at Sinai, Mount Sinai. He sees a burning bush. A burning bush at that time, and especially in the desert, is not an unusual phenomenon because the desert is hot, things are dry, they catch fire. But what stuck about this bush, what it was by itself, it was on fire, and it was not being consumed by the fire. You would see them in the leaves, maybe were green, but they would not turn into that brown or that dark color. And when Moses saw this this morning, he drew near, and it was then that God calls him. Can I say this this morning, church? Biblical calling, I believe this morning, involves every believer in Jesus Christ. Everyone this morning who is a Christian is called of God this morning. I believe this morning there is an assignment God has for you. And this assignment this morning is God orientated. This assignment this morning, amen, is not about you and I, amen, amusing or entertaining people. This assignment this morning is not you and I, amen, having money and being rich. This assignment this morning is not about our little plans, amen, of prospering and our little plans of, of doing what we want to do. Amen, God's assignment for every single one of our lives is God orientated because God wants the glory this morning. Our assignment this morning, man, brings glory to God. Our assignment this morning, man, is about souls making heaven their home. Our assignment this morning is about God being lifted up and the devil being exposed as a lie this morning. And one of the things I appreciate about our fellowship is our fellowship is made up of common people who have been used by God. We are told in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26 and 29, listen to what Paul says. He says, for you see your calling, brethren, that 
that not many why are wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things that are mighty, and the base things of the world, and the things which are despised, God has chosen, and the things which are not, to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. Listen to me, your assignment this morning is not about you and I patting ourselves on the back. Your assignment and my assignment this morning is for the glory of God. And we must understand that God uses common people to do great things. Church, how many of you know this morning Moses was a slave this morning that God elevated? And we look at things, amen, at life eh, that common people are able to do great things. We can talk this morning about Brexit, and I don't know how you feel about that, but Brexit was a victory of the common people this morning. Because the people, amen, said, no, 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 we want to stand on our own two feet. We don't want to bow, amen, to the ways of Europe. We don't want to bow, amen, to the agenda of the government, amen. This is what we want. And they made a stand for it. We can look in the Bible about Gideon. Gideon is running away. God calls this common man. He says, I'm the weakest. I'm the lowest in my father's house. I'm the weakest of the tribe. But God uses this man, amen, to lead his nation. We can talk about the disciples, uneducated fishermen. God uses Use this man to turn the world upside down. Our God this morning is in the business of using common people to do great things. So some people are asking this morning, how come I'm not hearing this calling? How come, how come it's not happening for me? When in verse one of our text, the New Living Translation says this, that Moses led the flock far into the wilderness. You see, Moses is far away from his normal environment. Moses is far away from so many things. So I believe this morning, many don't get called because you're around too many people. You're around social media. You're around the man, your second wife or your second husband or your secret boyfriend, your secret girlfriend, it's called your mobile phone. We're so much caught into things that we don't hear God. Can I ask you a question? When was the last time you got along with God? Because sometimes, church, we need to get aside and make time to be along with God. The Bible says, here is Moses and sees this burning bush. He could have looked and says, not my business to run away. He looked and the Bible says he drew near. And as he drew near, that's when God began to speak to him. Church, we need to draw near to God. And the Bible says, guess what? He would draw near to us. And as we draw near to God, God now all of a sudden becomes audible. God all of a sudden becomes clear this morning. But also, amen, we see in verse 10 and verse 11, when God called Moses, Moses begins to say, Lord, 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 Lord hey, Lord, who am I? Go, go, go. Hey, Lord, you, you got this wrong. I'm not the guy. Who am I? And what he was saying is, God, I'm not ready for this. Can I say this morning, church? His unreadiness was an indication of his readiness. The fact that this man realized, I'm not ready for this this morning. He thought somehow he disqualified himself, but no, he was actually qualifying himself. Here is Moses. Moses feels inadequate. Can I say something, church? Having a sense of inadequacy is a good thing. Do you know why? Because you are inadequate. Because you and I are insufficient this morning, church. And if you think this morning that you are ready, if you think this morning you're all that, if you think this morning, well, look at my spiritual CV, look at all that I've accomplished, look how great I am this morning, church. Listen, what a tragedy it is when there is more of you than more of God this morning. Listen, I've seen ministries, amen, that have been built around individuals and personalities, and the moment they're not there, the whole thing falls apart. Because it's not about them. Or should I say it was not about Jesus. It was not about God. It was about that man. It was not about that individual. It was about that personality this morning. What a tragedy for God to send you. Amen. To serve the people this morning. And they get more of you than more of God. Church, what a tragedy it is for God to send you. And people don't even see the God who sent you. Moses says, who am I? God, who am I? How, oh, God, who, God, look, who am I? What, what can I do? 
Can I say this morning, church, you're ready. When you say you're not ready. Because listen to me, when you say you're not ready, that's when you go in the power of God. That's when you go in the strength of God. That's when, amen, you, you begin, things begin to happen for you that it simply could not happen for you. This is why God says in Corinthians, amen, that no flesh would glory in my presence. That people, people say, I know him. I know her. I know them in that church. I, I, there's no way they could have pulled that off. Has to be God. Has to be. There's no other explanation this morning. Let me tell you how you know you're ready this morning. God answers Moses when Moses, I'm not ready. In verse 12, it says this. I'm going to go with you. That you're not going alone. Listen, Moses this morning never lost that dependency on the persons of God. Because when we jump all the way down to Exodus chapter 33, verse 15, here again, they, 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 they come into a difficult time. Time has passed. Years have passed. They come into a difficult time. Moses tells God these words in Exodus 33, verse 15. He says, then he said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us from here. Listen, church, we need God to lead the way. We need God to go ahead of us. Listen, to me, we need God to go ahead of us in being parents. We need God to go ahead of us in being spouses. We need God to go ahead of us, amen, in being fathers and being mothers and being children. We need God to go ahead of us, amen, and being employees or even being bosses at work. We need God to go ahead of us, amen, in just representing him in this dark world this morning, church. So let's consider, amen, holding pattern. Because I'm going to say to you right now, God takes notice of everything you're going through. There's nothing that you are going through that God does not take notice of. In verse 7, God tells Moses, listen, tell them I've seen. I've seen how they've been afflicted. I've heard them in the words of the taskmasters. I, I, I see what these people are doing to my people. I, I'm, I'm very clear about this this morning. God says, I see. And I can know this morning, some people's mind, listen, I'm grateful that God sees, I'm grateful God hears, I'm grateful God is aware this morning, but why doesn't he stop it? Why doesn't he step in and change things? Think about what these people this morning have been going through. They are slaves. God, why don't you do something about what I'm going through? Well, I believe, amen, if you read verse 8, we see the answer. Verse 8, God begins to tell Moses, because I see in verse 7, I've come down to do something about it. Because I've noticed, I've taken this note of these things, now I'm going to do something. Listen to me, church. What you are going through is connected to what you are going to. Let me say it again. What you are going through is connected to what you are going to. Two. Many, 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 many years ago, God spoke to me very clearly, I'm going to send you one day to South Africa. Very clear. Very, very clear. And I was clear about it. I knew that God was going to do it. I didn't know when he was going to do it. I didn't know how he was going to do it. I just knew it was going to happen. As I stay obedient, as I serve God, as I trusted God, I knew it was going to take me. I've never been to the nation in my, my entire life. All I knew was South Africa was Nelson Mandela apartheid. That's it. I didn't know what that nation was. Well, time passed, and I eventually got released uh, by my church to, 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 to start our first church. It was an archway. We were sent out, amen, to take over that church. And when we got to archway, after a few years, God began to save South Africans. They began to come in one by one to the church. They come in the church, and they're getting saved. And what I'm, I began to see is that God was preparing me for South Africans by bringing South Africans to the church. God was get, getting me ready for the mindset of the people. God was getting me ready, amen, for how they thought and how they, how they were, you could say, as, as a people this morning. And I want you to understand this morning, amen, here is God speaking to these people. He's saying you are in Egypt being a slave. But I'm going to take you out and bring you to the promised land. But the problem this morning is God cannot just lift you up from Egypt and drop you in the promised land. That would simply be unhealthy this morning. See, because, listen to me on this church, because you are not prepared for the promised land, 
What God says, I'm going to put you in a holding pattern while you wait for the promise. And while you're waiting for the promise, you're going to unfortunately have to deal with some pain. You're going to have to handle some pain. Listen, church, many times God would allow a painful situation or a painful circumstance in our life to swallow us up. I believe this morning, man, one of the greatest ways we see this in the life uh, of my good friend Jonah. I don't like Jonah very much, if you know him like me. But Jonah illustrates this very much this morning. Jonah shows us or answers the question, why am I here? See, here he is. God tells him to go to Nineveh. He decides, I'm going to go to Tarshish, the, the complete opposite direction. And while he goes away from the will of God, he's swallowed up, amen, by a great fish. We know the story, amen. Many of us uh, learned it in Sunday school this morning. Uh, and he's swallowed up, amen, by this great fish this morning. Uh, and you can say, amen, he enters, amen, a specific season in his life of spiritual growth. And this season in our life of spiritual growth is actually a holding pattern where you and I cannot move to the left, where you and I cannot move to the right this morning, man. All we can do is sit like Jonah, amen, sat in the belly of this great fish, amen, so God can have our undivided attention and speak to us. See, God put this man in a holding pattern because he wanted to speak to his heart. Jonah is now all alone this morning. There are no friends he can call. There's no family that's going to come around to his house. Amen. There's no books he can read. Amen. There's no cable he can switch and check the channels to see what are the new films. Amen. And Netflix this morning. Amen. There's even no food to eat this morning. There's no interference. There's no interruption this morning. Amen. And here's this man. He had plenty of time to think. He had plenty of time to meditate. He had plenty of time to pray. You know, if you read the life of the book of Jonah, in chapter one this morning, Jonah is not praying at all. Not once do you see this guy pray. All he's doing is running away from the will of God. And it was not until the storm came this morning. In fact, listen, church, when the storm finally came to the boat and the storm threatened to destroy the boat uh, that was trying to take him away from the will of God this morning, man, the Bible tells us we find unsaved people crying out to God in prayer. And we find the prophet of God not praying, he's sleeping. Now, I know nobody else ever does that here. But Jonah's a man of God, and when he should be praying, he's sleeping. In fact, in chapter 2, chapter 2 is the only time you see Jonah pray. When he's swallowed up by his circumstances. In fact, chapter 2, the whole of chapter 2 is a prayer. He's, not having, he's, he's praying to God. The whole of a chapter. He's beginning to realize, you know what, maybe I got this wrong. We need to realize, maybe, amen, I need to do what God has told me to do. I wonder who that's like this in this place. See, the truth is, church, when you and I are in deep difficulty this morning, that is when, amen, God can talk to us. And when it has our undivided attention, God can now show us things this morning about ourselves that maybe we didn't realize. And the reality is many of us, we think we're okay, we think we're great, we think we're fine, we think we've got everything, all the I's dotted and all the T's crossed and our life is now uh, packaged in a nice, clean way and God is happy with us this morning. No, 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 no. Sometimes God can't talk to you because you're too full of yourself. Let me give you a few of God's holding patterns. When you're sick in your physical body and you've prayed, and God hasn't healed you yet. You're in a holding pattern. One of the first books I've read, I try to remember what, 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 what it was, the name of the book. But it, it was about a pastor who God was using very powerfully. And one day he fell, he, he fell sick and, and he was in a hospital and he's there and, and he, could, he just couldn't do anything. Usually he's very busy. He's very uh, um, uh, industrious. He's very, you know, he's sharp. He's, 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 he's making things happen. But he's in his bed. He's by himself. He cannot do anything for himself. And he said these words. I'll never forget it. He says, God spoke to him. He says, now do I have your attention? He is functioning his strength. And during lies, somewhere down the road, he left God. And God allowed him to become sick so we can talk. So we can deal with some things this morning. This morning, when you're having problems with your children and you put your children on the altar and God hasn't delivered them yet, you're in a holding pattern. 
They could be raised in church, raised in God, but one day, man, they begin to make some foolish decisions. I don't know the world wants our children. The devil wants them. And they begin to do stupidness. And you're praying, you believe in God, and you try to change him in your own strength and nothing happens. And finally, you lay them at the altar, and you think, okay, they're in God's hand now. God's going to deal with them, and you're waiting for God to deal with them straight away. No, 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 it doesn't work that way. You're going to hold them, Pastor. Maybe you pray for the salvation of your loved ones. Unsaved family members, unsaved parents, unsaved spouses. And they're not saved yet. You're going to hold them, Pastor. And they're frustrating you to no end. They're, they're vexing your soul. They're breaking your heart. You're in a holding pattern. Maybe this morning, amen, doors are shutting before you can even knock them. Back in the day, I don't know what happens. You know, I haven't worked secular in years. You, the, the letters you get from employ, employers or, the, you know, don't call us, we'll call you, you know. And you're trying to get this job. You, you're trying and you're just getting a rejection. So sometimes they don't even bother. Or, or maybe you're trying to do a work for God. You want to be, you want one day you get launched out and preach the gospel, sir. And it's simply not happening. Can I say maybe you are in a holding pattern? And I really believe this morning at these times, it is so important you and I remember to praise God while we're waiting. And there's three things about a holding pattern. Number one, this morning, that pattern has a purpose. Number two, that morning, that pattern has a plan. And that pattern last has a purpose. Or should I say a process? There's a process this morning that you and I must go through. So let's close quick, look at the hard reality. Because I'll tell you what a holding pattern is this morning. A holding pattern is when a plane has reached its destination, but has not been given permission to land yet. You've taken a plane from Stansted to Poland. You've taken a plane from Gatwick to Montego Bay. And you've got there. They've, you've been told it's going to take an hour and 15 minutes. You've been told it's going to take eight hours and a half. You've arrived there. But you have not been given permission to land yet. You, you are close this morning. In fact, you are there. But you cannot land yet. And let me tell you why. When you get there, there's something called air traffic control. And air traffic control this morning, they know that due to bad weather or bad we or certain weather conditions, they know because of some problem I mean, on the tarmac, they know because of, 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 of the queuing up of plane, because you're not the only one that's using that runway. They know, I man, because of, 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 of the runway of, of circumstances and dangers this morning, uh, they know this morning that it's not safe for you to land yet. And what that means this morning is either the place you are going is not ready yet or you are not ready yet. And because both or neither are not ready yet this morning, man, in the meantime, you're in a holding pattern. And what that means, you are going around and around and around until air traffic control says land. You're there. You're not hours away. You've actually arrived. You're in the place you want to be. You're in the place you've desired, you've planned, you, you've prayed for, you believe. You're there. But you just can't land yet. See this morning, church. Your holding pattern can be for a long time. This is the hard reality. There are people right now, you're probably thinking, how long is this going to be like this? How long is this going to be happening to me? How, when, when is it going to change? When are things going to stop? How long? When is it going to end? Let me give you something to marinate about this morning. The children of Israel 
were in the 430 year holding pattern. Think about that. For 430 years. That's older than some of you here. They're in a holding pattern. In Exodus chapter 13, verse 17, right, so then it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God did not lead them by the way of the, of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. And God says, lest perhaps the people change their minds when they see war and return to Egypt. Then in 400 years, Finally, God says, land. It's time to land. God brings them out. But God does not take them in the direct way. Because God knew they were soft. And they were not ready to fight any battles. When I grew up this morning, well, when I was growing up, should I say, in school, you know, you, you, you know, when you have your first fight, I see some people fight like this. <laughs> and that's the men. <laughs> that's the men. Let me help you. This how you, you have to you have to progress from this to this. You do more damage like this. This is Israel. This is some of us in the spiritual realm. God says, uh-uh, that ain't gonna work. Clench your fist. Good, okay, good, okay, 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 that's good, that's good, good, okay. Bring, bring, okay, all right, all right. Now aim for the aim for the ribs, okay, that's very good, okay. Or the jaw, okay, that's what or, or, or if you're gonna do this, poke this in the eyes. God doesn't want soft Christians. Because tell you right now, you are going to have to fight to get what God has given you this morning. Listen, just because you showed up this morning doesn't mean things are just a given. Just because you got saved this morning doesn't mean nothing wrong is going to ever happen to you and everything's going to be wonderful. Listen, just because this morning, man, there is a church called the Potter's House in Tottenham and 551 be High Road doesn't mean, man, the principalities and powers in Tottenham say, oh, they're here, let's pack up and leave. You know what they're saying? Oh, yeah. And they're like this. And you're not. They're ready to fight. They're, they're ready to throw down, as the Americans say this morning, church. Listen, you're going to have to fight. And here is God this morning. God took them the back way. Because the wilderness and the wars was going to prepare them for the promised land. So, church, the reason you are going through the same thing over and over again is because it is making you strong enough to handle where God is taking you to. Verse 18, God basically says, when you come out this morning, you're going to be like an army that's ready to fight. When, when this is all done and dusted, you're going to be completely different from the people who left Egypt this morning. Listen, church, I've seen people, I know people who have been given wealth that they did not work for and they've ended up being monsters. Monsters. I know people who've been given some serious money. Mom and dad has worked, uncle, so-and-so has worked, or this person has worked and they've given it to them and they are completely, I mean, this, they, 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 they scare me. Because there's something about when you work for what you get. There's something, man, when you've paid a price, man, for what you have this morning, this morning. Here's this morning, man, slavery, man, what it does, it prepares me for the wilderness. The wilderness prepares me for war. And war prepares me for the promised land this morning. If God just took me, I mean, from slavery and dropped me in the promised land this morning, it would be a disaster this morning because I may be free from being a slave this morning, but I have still a slave's mindset. When we were in South Africa, 
there was a lady we know her called Joan. She was from Canada and she came there. She's part of an NGO. She's trying to help the people in poverty stricken areas, et cetera, and so forth. Are uh, there in townships, locations, we call them. And what happened there, they had gathered money from Canada and they bought this huge land and, and they had planted vegetables and, and, and all these crops for them. And, and it, they had harvested it and, 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 and they, they'd given it to them. Hey guys, this is, this is yours. And they, they taught them, this is how you, this is how you harvest, this is how you plant and this is how you harvest and this is how you, bring in the crops and hey guys it's yours and they fly away they go they come back and the whole place is barren barren i mean it's a mess and when they came they're looking at the place like what what what, what what's happening and people came and said well uh, we need you to do, do it again for us said, what do, do it again for us no, 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 no. We taught you. We showed you. Don't you know the whole thing? You, you know, you, we, we teach a man how to catch fish and, you know, and, you know we, we showed you. And, and no, 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 we, we don't, we don't do it. We've given you everything. We bought the land. We've everything. And what they did, they burned the whole place down. Because when they don't get their wants, they do something called totoy. They burn the whole place down. Oh, you may be free from being a slave, but you still have a slave mindset. And the reality for some this morning, God is after your mindset this morning. For some this morning, God is after your mentality this morning. Because there's some people who may just drop out. You, you, don't, you don't stay the course of things. You, you could be unthankful this morning. And the reason things keep on happening and happening and happening this morning is you cannot see that God is trying to prepare you for where you're going this morning. He's taking you and I somewhere. Let me say this with all due respect this morning. Couple, you know. There are men here one day you want to get married, and there are women here one day you want to get married this morning. Let me help you, bro, sis. Sis, he ain't going to wife you the way you are. It's not going to happen. Let me help some people, the other people this morning. They're not going to hire you the way you are. Let me help you more people. God's not going to bless you the way you are. You cannot bring certain mentalities. Listen, I cannot bring a single man's mentality into a marriage man di a, a, a dimension this morning. It simply does not, and it cannot work this morning. You are messing yourself up. I have a family member, it's everyone's fault for theirs. Everyone's fault is their fault, 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 and it's never their fault. I'm going to be real this morning, man. There's times I've got things wrong. There's times, man, in relationships, uh, the things I could have done, I didn't do the things, man. I, I, lift, I lift my hand up. I, 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 I got it wrong. I, I was right. And I, I didn't handle this. But there's never been a time where I thought to myself, you know, everything in life has, I've been perfect. Everybody else has been wrong. I love a powerful testimony of our pastors. The man is David Bannison, and he, he shares his testimonies on YouTube. He shares his testimony, and, and he, you know, his, his former pastor, Rick Martinez, Martinez Church. Some of you have seen him in conference in Prescott. Uh, and he, he shares this te testimony about before he got saved, he joined his army, and he's running away after, he's running away from this situation, he's running away from that situation, he's running away from everything. And he said this word He says, I finally realized that whenever, wherever I went, I was there with me. That's, that's a revelation for some people right now. That the same problems, the same issues, the same struggles are right there. I'm thinking, what a surprise. Listen, church, you cannot handle things the way you used to handle things before Jesus. You cannot do life the way you used to do life before Jesus. Jesus puts it this way this morning, man. You cannot put new wine into old wine skins. See, this morning, you can't get to the promised land unprepared and i believe this one of the setbacks and the disobedience and so the, the disappointments and the things in life they they ought to make you and i more prayerful they ought to make you and i more spiritual they ought to make you and i more confident more focused and more committed this morning so when you get to where god is taking you i'm prepared i'm ready and i know this morning can be frustrating because it is frustrating i know it very very well to be a man in a holding pattern. It's a bit like, the only thing I can describe it like, and I want to close with this, is like a waiting room. Every single one of us knows what it's like to be in a waiting room 
or maybe you are a, you are you are in a queue in a supermarket or some area or something like this and you know whatever it is and you you're in this queue and we are very observant because we know everybody who was there before us and we sure know everybody who was there who came after us we know we've clocked it we know i've been in queues I and mean, i was queuing the other day and i'm there and i know it was there and all of a sudden this person came and they kind of stepped in front of me and like hmm, you try it bro <laughs> i keep it quiet about this one <laughs> i'm going to let you know who was here before you it's something there's something it's in every single one of us we are clear you were there you were there that's good that's good it's good you, you just hold your corner you just kind of stay there it's the queue you know we're like, we are doing like that and i tell you right now there's nothing worse this morning when somebody is called and they get seen before you, who came after you? There's nothing worse. I was here first. Let me close and say this, church. If that's the case, maybe because what he's holding you up for far bigger than you think or it may simply be because you have to go through more preparation but the bottom line is this god wants us to trust him and trust his process as we're in his holding pattern you will land this morning the master will tell you eventually land this morning the control power of heaven will eventually say land this morning this morning be encouraged this morning trust his process let's bow our head let's close our eyes this morning every head bowed every eyes closed amen Very quickly this morning, I do thank God for every precious man and woman in this building. But maybe this morning you've come into the service and you're not right with God. You've come into the service and you're not giving your life to Jesus Christ. So one of the reasons when I got saved this morning, yes, I know I was a sinner. Yes, I know I was not born again, but I looked at my life and I thought to myself, my life was a picture of taking two steps forward and ten backwards. It seemed like things were simply just not happening. Things that I deeply wanted to see. Things that I deeply desired to happen for me. And the reality is the reason they were not happening is I was doing it in my own strength. I was doing it my way. I knew there was another way. I knew God had a way, but I thought my way is far better than God's way. For many years, I did life my way. And there were times that were okay, but there was much more times I was heartbroken. I was depressed. I was lonely. I was defeated. I was empty. I was in this holding pattern of sin. But one day, God's voice broke in. If you, you can land, but you need to give your life to Christ. You, you, you can land, but you need, to, you need to admit that you're a sinner in need of my mercy and my forgiveness. Friend, when I did that, I was never the same again. When I did that, all those things I wanted to see happen, God didn't just do it. He did so much more. Maybe you're here in this building right now. You're not right with Jesus. You haven't, you haven't had your sins forgiven. Can I let you know right now that when you give your life to Christ, you can finally land. That that vicious circle can be broken. Those curses over your life can be broken. That home can be healed. That mind can be restored. If you give your life to Jesus Christ, See, God doesn't have you in that holding pattern. Sin does. God has the power to stop it. And he works with your cooperation. It's called repentance. And when you turn from your sins and you put your faith in him this morning, friend, the devil wants you to run out of petrol and crash, but God wants you to land safely because he sees you as precious cargo. Very quickly, under the sound of my voice, you're in this building, you're not right with Christ. You're not born again. You have never given your life to Jesus Christ. I, I don't ask you whether you believe in God. The devil believes in God, but that hasn't changed him this morning. I'm going to ask you whether you go to church from time to time. That's not the issue. The issue is that you are a sinner in need of your sins forgiven and in need, amen, of the mercy of God. 
And only Jesus Christ can do that this morning. Will you be honest with yourself? Say, I want to get my heart right with God. I need my sins forgiven. If that's you, will you do one thing? Just lift your hand up and put it down this morning. Amen. You're not doing this for me. You're not doing this for this church. God loves you. You're here because he has a plan. He has a purpose for your life. He wants to save you this morning as we sung. I needed saving 29 years ago. Friend, you need saving right now. Don't die in your sins. Give your life to Jesus Christ. If that's you, lift your hand up. It's my hand. I want to pray this morning, Pastor. You pray, but slip it up and put it down. We'll see that. We'll pray for you. Very simple this morning. Don't be embarrassed. God loves you. Jesus died for you, opening the cross, naked, beaten, bruised, so you and I can have our sins forgiven. So you and I do not longer have to be the enemies of God, but become friends and the family of God. Anyone in this building, slip it. Here's my hand. Pray with me. Or maybe you're a backslider. Maybe you once had a relationship with God. Maybe you were once a child of God. You were once born again, but today you're away from Jesus. Today, maybe you become religious, just going through the motions, but there's no real heart into it anymore. This one of the spirit of God has brought you here because God loves you. And God has a tremendous destiny and plan and purpose for your life. And he wants you to land safely. Quickly, if that's you, lift your hand up. Here's my hand. I'm a backslider. I'm away from God. I want to recommit my life again. Quickly, slip it up and put it down. Don't be embarrassed. God, Christ is here. Quickly, final time I'm going to say this, unsaved backslider you didn't lift your hand before right now you want to get your heart right with God you want to break that vicious circle of sin and come into a wonderful relationship with the son of God say here's my hand Jesus I want to get my heart right with you just put it up and put it down we'll see it and pray up and down quickly up and down amen amen then I want to speak to the people of God this morning there's nothing worse this morning church somebody comes after us and gets called in front of us I've been there I've been there longer you know church as a church we've been called the head of Israel they were there before us before there was a church there was Israel Listen, God has not forgotten them. From Genesis to Revelation, you see Israel. All the way to the end. God has not forgotten his people. God will never break his promise. I'm saying that this morning to say there's a someone here you need to know that God has forgotten you. That it may seem like things are ahead of you or people are going ahead of you. No, it doesn't work that way. God has not forgotten you this morning. You're in a holding pattern. God is developing some things. God is instilling some things in you to prepare you for where he's taking you. To prepare you for what he has for you this morning. And what we need to understand more than anything, church, is to understand this morning that there is a plan. There is a purpose. It's a process. Trust God's processes. Trust His holding pattern. Trust what He has for you. I would open the altar this morning. Let's all rise up to our feet this morning. Let's come. Let's come and find something to pray this morning. As I mentioned this morning, some of us are not in a holding pattern, but it's going to happen. You're going to come to that place. It could be. It could be five years from now. It could be next week. And you're going to be in that position for a period of time. And you could begin to maybe question and you become frustrated. You begin to ask the question, why and how long? And I've ticked all the boxes. Why isn't things opening? Why isn't things changing? Why is it happening for me?